everyone and thank you for joining us. You are welcome to this event, the second of our undergraduate information events this week here at the UCD School of Agriculture and Food Science. We received lots of registrations from people to attend this event from across Ireland, but also from overseas. So wherever you are listening to us from this evening, a very warm welcome. My name is Valerie Abbott. I work as part of the team here in the school and it's my pleasure to chair this event this evening. I'm coming to you live from the beautiful UCD Belfield campus here in Dublin. And if anyone watching this evening has had an opportunity to visit the campus at any stage, I think you'll certainly agree that it's a fabulous facility and it's a really special place to complete your studies. For anyone who hasn't had an opportunity to visit us as yet, there is a series of interactive virtual tours on the campus available at the myucd.ie website. So I would invite you to log on and take a look around. UCD is unique in that we are the only university in Ireland with the School of Agriculture and Food Science. Here we have over 70 academic staff at the school who are leading experts in their discipline, both at an international and national level. And it is this knowledge that underpins all of the degree programmes offered here. And it's a real strength of the programmes. We offer a range of programmes at undergraduate level which span the entire food chain. And this evening we will focus on our agricultural science programmes within which we offer 11 different areas of specialisation. We have some really exciting changes to our programmes this year, which we were going to hear about shortly. We plan to be live here until about 8pm or shortly after, and we hope to give you an overview of the various programmes within the agricultural, the agricultural science degree programme. You'll hear from academic staff members, we'll hear some from current students, we have some contributions on the professional work experience, on career opportunities and lots more. So an exciting lineup. There is an opportunity for you to submit some questions in the comments section below, so we will strongly encourage you to do this and to engage with us during the event. You should take the opportunity this evening to ask any questions that you have, so that when you leave us, you will have all the information that you will need to make a decision. There will be a live Q&A session at the end, so we hope to address many of these questions. And some of my colleagues are working away here in the background this evening, and they are happy to, do, to respond to you directly also. Our first speaker this evening is Professor Alex Evans. Professor Evans is the Dean of Agriculture here at UCD, and he's also the head of school at the UCD School of Agriculture and Food Science. Professor Evans. Welcome everyone from wherever you are joining us for this event, and thank you for your attendance and interest in our Bachelor of Agricultural Science degree programmes. We are also the first destination of choice in Ireland for students studying agricultural science programmes. UCD is a fantastic destination to complete your undergraduate studies. UCD is ranked in the top 1% of universities globally, and you will be taught by some of the best academics in the world. We also have a beautiful and modern 133 hectare campus here in Belfield, South Dublin, with excellent facilities to enjoy. And also a 250 hectare university farm, Lions Farm, located about 35 minutes from our Belfield campus. It's a tremendous resource for our students. UCD is Ireland's global university. If you decide to come to UCD, you can expect to study an internationally relevant curriculum, to have opportunities to travel abroad during your studies, to sit in a classroom with students from many different countries, to be taught by faculty from Ireland and overseas, and at the end of your studies, to be a global citizen connected with a network of more than 280,000 UCD alumni located in more than 170 countries around the globe. The Bachelors of Agricultural Science is one of our flagship programmes with an intake of approximately 270 students per year. Once in the programme, you will have the opportunity to study one of 11 different degree options that you will hear about this evening. Our programmes are constantly changing and this year we have added an exciting new crop science degree program and programs such as dairy business, agri-environmental science, forestry and also horticulture are now all entered via DN250 agricultural science. If you so choose this enables you to postpone the decision on what exact degree program you will study until the end of first year. We think this is really positive development for students offering you more choice. 
During your study programs, there are exchange and professional work experience opportunities available to you, and you'll hear more about those this evening as well. The programs that we have offer have never been more relevant. Developing graduates that respond to global challenges such as population growth, the climate emergency, the links between food and health, greater focus on animal health and welfare, consumer demand for more plant-based diets, requirements to protect our natural resources, as well as the growing importance and relevance of the Sustainable Development Goals. It's certainly an exciting time to study these programs. So thank you again for logging on this evening. I hope you find it informative and interesting. Please ask any questions that you might have through the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. And I look forward to welcoming you here to UCD in the near future. Thank you very much, Professor Evans. Lovely to hear from you this evening. And thank you for your contribution. A really great overview of our school and the opportunities available here to prospective students. If I could pick one point perhaps that Mr. Evans made, it would be um, his reference to the many global challenges that we are now facing and how these make it an even more exciting and relevant time than ever for any of you to consider studying agricultural science. The solutions that are needed for these problems will require really highly skilled graduates into the future and hopefully maybe that might be some of you that are watching us here this evening. So we'll now move on to our first panel discussion of the evening which will feature a number of academic, academic staff members from the school. This session will be chaired by my colleague Anne Markey. Among many other roles, Anne is the academic coordinator for first year. Before I welcome Anne, I would just like to remind you to submit any questions that you have in the comment box below. Over to you, Anne. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thanks very much for that introduction, Valerie. So my name is Anne Markey. I'm a lecturer in the, the School of Ag um, I've forgotten where I'm a lecturer, <laughs> School of Agriculture and Food Science here in UCD, and also the coordinator of the first year uh, Bachelor in Agricultural Science programme. So I'm here to talk to you this evening about uh, the DN250, the Bachelor's Degree in Agricultural Science, and it's been expanded from previous years. A couple of, of changes. We now have 11 options under the, the the DN250 programme code and it's up to you. You can either indicate one of those options if you have a particular interest or you can say no preference um, and either way you are guaranteed a place into one of those 11 programmes because if you in indicate no preference you have a, a chance at the end of first year to choose from one of those 11 programmes. In a couple of minutes I'm going to introduce you to three of the lecturers, my colleagues, on these 11 options to give you a flavour of, of what's involved and perhaps an example of possible career opportunities in those programmes. We haven't got a whole lot of time to cover all of the details, so please feel free to ask any questions or check out uh, the, our website. Before I go on to my three colleagues, I'm just going to tell you uh, for a couple of moments what, com what is common between all the 11 options. So number one, it's a four year programme regardless of the option you choose. Number two, all of the programmes, all of the 11 programmes have a very valuable work experience, professional work experience, or we call it the PWE in the third year of your programme. All of the programmes op offer an opportunity for study abroad. Um, and all of the programmes have more or less a common first year, more or less covering the basic sciences and introductions to the various programmes. And then as you progress through the degree, become more and more specific to the, uh, the content of your specific programme. We take in approximately 270 students into first year and hopefully you'll be one of those. So now I'm going to go over to my three colleagues, Professor Kevin McDonnell, uh, Dr. Ching Wang Li and Dr. Helen Sheridan to talk about some of the programmes. So we've 11 programmes and each of them are going to give a, a flavour um, of those. And Kevin, how are you Kevin? It's good to see you there this evening. Um, there, there are two programmes that I'd like to, Kevin to start off with. And the first is our new crop science programme. Maybe you can tell us a little bit Kevin what, about the new crop science programme. Hi Anne, thank you very much for that introduction. Great to be here and to everybody who's listening, you're very welcome, delighted you could join us this evening. So the crop science programme, Anne, as you've indicated, it's built upon some of the existing modules that we have that are part of the common pool for our students, but then it develops specialisms as the students get into third year and fourth year. 
and the idea around these specialisms in crop nutrition, in agronomy, in genetics, in uh, precision technology is to enhance the students' knowledge of this sector. And this crop science program, it's built on the demands from the industry for more advanced understanding of the specialisms associated with crop production. So it's driven by demand from the malting industry, the uh, protein industry, where we're trying to develop new protein crops that are suitable to our climate. It's driven by, for example, the oilseed grape market, which is looking for very specialized oils for bioplastics, for cosmetics, for alternative uses, as well as, for example, gluten-free ingredients. So we're looking at changes in both animal and human diets, and the crop industry is trying to respond to that, as well as developing these opportunities for advanced industrial applications of crop products as well. So a new and evolving program, and this is the first year that we're going to launch it, and driven by market demand and market opportunities for it. Sounds really exciting, Kevin. I know you're also really involved in the Agricultural Systems Technology Programme, so maybe give us a couple of moments flavour of that programme? Sure, Anne. So this programme, the Agricultural Systems Technology, it's evolved really from a lot of our linkages to the US industry, where they're looking at how could we combine agriculture with data science and with technology and this is really what the agri-food sector is looking for to see how can we look at new ways of measuring the performance of the crops be it soil be it water be it animals through the production system so we're looking at ways of capturing data we're looking at ways of doing things in a more advanced way we're looking at smart tools and smart technologies to make i suppose life perhaps a little bit easier for the producer but also to add value to what they are doing to get a better understanding of the value and capturing that value all the way along the chain so the consumer has a greater degree of confidence in knowing where the food has come from, the production pathways associated with it, the carbon balances, the nitrogen balances associated with it, and it's trapping all of that data and linking it to the production pathways. So again, the linking of agriculture and data and enabling our students to have a better understanding of how we might merge both of those spaces together. Fantastic, Kevin. It sounds like a really interesting program, something I might even start again on myself. You're very welcome, Anne. <laughs> uh, Chen Wang, we'll move to you now. So Chen Wang is going to talk very briefly about the Food and Agribusiness Management Program and the relatively new Food Business with Chinese program. Chen Wang, could you tell us a little bit about those programs? Mm -hmm. Thanks very much, Anne. And welcome everyone to join us for today's information session. Uh, I'm Chen Guang Li, and I'm a lecturer at the School of Agriculture and Food Science. Uh, I lecture in uh, agriculture economics and food marketing. Uh, as Anne just mentioned, I will br briefly introduce about the food and agribusiness management uh, program. Basically, I know maybe some of you out there, you enjoy both a science subject and a business subject then uh, very likely, you know, this uh, food and agribusiness management program will be something, you know, uh, you might be interested in and could be a very good option to you. Uh, during this program four years, you will learn uh, the principles of economics and management. And one very uh, good advantage uh, of the program is basically you will learn this along the entire supply chain of the food industry from farm management to uh, production understanding and to uh, marketing consumers and the taxation uh, financial control so um, you will have a good understanding of you know how food are manufactured inside the industry as well as you know um, explanation or maybe exploration of the you know how the impact to the environment Excellent. another another sorry and maybe i should move on to the food business with chinese studies that is a new program developed in the last three years basically we got some requests from the industry asking whether you have you know talents who learn know both chinese language and also food business and based on the, the demand, we developed this uh, program uh, jointly with Confucius Institute in UCD, combining their strengths in uh, language teaching and uh, culture teaching, and our school's uh, food business with food science. And also, we have a partner in China, Renmin University. So within this program, students learn uh, 
Chinese cultural language, food science, uh, food business. In third year, for the entire year, students will go to China uh, to study in Renmin University. Basically, they will uh, study language and culture there and have the opportunity to, to immerse them in the cultural environment, which will be the excellent way to, to learn. I mean, I, I wouldn't say this program uh, will be suitable for everyone because it's quite challenging. You need to, you know, really love language. You need to, you know, love science and business. But I'd say if you can succeed in this program, you will be very attractive in the job market. Thank Sounds you very, very Thank you, Chen Wang. That sounds really, really exciting as well. And, and then finally, well, not finally, but next we move um, to Helen Sheridan. And Helen, Helen's going to talk for a couple of moments about the horticulture programme, the forestry programme, and the agri-environmental science programme. Helen. Hi, Anne. Thanks very much. And uh, good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us. So I'm going to talk about the three uh, programme options that make up the Environment and Sustainable Resource Management section. So the first of these is forestry, and that's really about the science, the art, and also the practice of managing forests. So students within that program will learn about managing forest systems for not just tree production, although timber production is a key part of it, but also renewable energy, carbon sequestration, biodiversity, and also water protection. And indeed, they're going to develop skills in forest planting, but also some other really transferable skills, such as remote sensing and the use of geographical information systems, for example. The second program option that I mentioned is horticulture. And uh, that's really about the sustainable production of plants for food, leisure, but also broader social benefits. So our students within the horticulture degree will develop skills and expertise in plant production systems and then in the science of plant growth, giving them the skills that they need to become competent and confident leaders as professional horticulturalists and also horticultural scientists, which of course is the key area with the increased focus on, on plant-based diets as mentioned by Professor Evans earlier. And then the, the final degree in that, that section is the Agri-Environmental Sciences degree, the one which I belong myself. And Agri-Environmental Sciences is really about, you know, that interface between agriculture and the broader environment. So we look at developing the scientific skills within the students to be able to understand the relationships between agriculture and the wider environment, both positive and negative relationships. Uh, and, and in relation to an awful lot of key topics in terms of sustainability at the moment, such as greenhouse gas emissions, water quality, soil quality, um, and sustainable use of these resources, but also around biodiversity as well, for example. Great stuff, Helen. That was great. Thanks a million. So we're actually going to go back to, to Kevin now and talk about uh, three programmes, the last three programmes that we haven't spoken about. And they are the Animal and Crop Production Programme, the Animal Science Programme, and the Animal Science Specialising in Equine Programme. So back to you, Kevin. Thanks, Anne. So yes, indeed, the Animal and Crop Production is, I suppose, our, our general ag degree. It's our core programme. Many students come in and decide to stay with that programme as it gives them a very good general basic overview of agriculture. And as you mentioned earlier, um, there's a lot of commonality across our programs whereby we build the students upon basic science principles in first year and second year. And then we add to that and that specialism as we go forward. In the animal and crop production, the ACP program, we build on their generalization and we give them the option to take a number of elective modules when they want to get a little bit of specialization in one particular area. You mentioned also the, the animal science program. So this is a, an option that animal, sorry, that students can choose at the end of first year or to the direct entry pathway, where they have made a decision to specialize in animal production. So their modules, while they have the basic science ones, will also focus on animal reproduction, on nutrition, on health, on welfare. And it includes the relationship between the animal production systems and also the industry, both nationally and internationally as well. Also, the students have an option in first year to choose equine science, which again is a very specialized program. So 
they will have a common first year and some common modules in second year, but then they'll start to specialize. And they'll specialize in, for example, modules associated with equine health, with equine genetics and nutrition. But there will also be a focus on the equine business sector, both nationally and internationally, and how there's been a lot of innovation in this space. And there's opportunities, therefore, for students to look at how startup companies have evolved in the equine industry and how that has led to a number of spin-ups and startups in UCD. So a lot of the researchers that are supporting the research in UCD also teach into these programs and all of the academics will have a role in developing and running research programs. So that's cutting edge research across all of those programs that's fed back into the teaching program. So our students kind of get to see really where the industry is going, what is the latest uh, happenings within all of these industry sectors, and they bring that back into the teaching program as well. There's, there's one program I forgot, Kevin. I know you did. Dairy business, isn't it? And dairy business, dairy that's business. the one. Not in Ireland. I know, you're only, you're only checking to see what I'm listening to you, Anne. I know uh -huh. that. Um, so this is a specialist program where the students will be working on modules specifically focused on the dairy sector. And within that, for example, they will do some production modules in Moorpark, uh, in Cork, where they have an opportunity to get some of the practical experiences associated with the production strategies there. They'll also be dealing with the business side of it here in UCD. So what, how has the dairy business evolved? What do you know, people who are coming into this industry, what do they need to know about the future of this industry and where it's going? And that will give them not only a national understanding, but also the international dimension associated with dairy business, because it has evolved very significantly. And we have seen the importance of understanding the techniques associated with dairy production and dairy business because of evolving consumer demands, because of concerns regarding animal welfare, of carbon footprint associated with it. And these are all programs that have very active uh, research associated with them. So that leads into, as we mentioned, the teaching program to facilitate, to facilitate the students to understand, well, how are we going to manage if we have restrictions on nitrates? How are we going to manage a dairy production system if we have to limit the amount of chemicals that we can use to manage that production herd? So all of these programs have evolved to try and meet the consumer demand, to look at changing and evolving legislation and to build that knowledge base within the students. Excellent job, Kevin. Absolutely excellent. So the, I mean, the diversity amongst the 11 programs is absolutely um, amazing. And I suppose another thing that, that makes the Agricultural Science degree program um, unique is some of the facilities we have here in UCD. I know Rosemount is particularly of interest to your programs, Helen. Absolutely, Anne. Um, we're incredibly lucky with our campus as a whole, but the fact that we have the Rosemont facility on it. So Rosemont is about five acres, I believe, in size. Um, and we have a range of top class facilities there that are available for students to use, including glass house facilities, scanners, uh, controlled environment, plant growth chambers, um, and also the Lamb Clark Irish Historical Apple Collection. And that that has national importance in terms of preserving uh, the genetic resources for our native apples. And indeed, in addition to all of that, there's a community garden there which students can avail of, and an apiary. So a really wide range of resources really? available to students. Over there. What's an apiary, Helen? Where are we keep bees? That's excellent. That's fantastic. And, so and of course, we are the answer to that. <laughs> And of course, we also have Lines and Stage, Kevin, based out in Newcastle. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, and thanks for, for reminding me about that. And uh, Professor Evans had referred to it as well. So we have a 250 hectare farm located about 30, 35 minutes um, to, the, to the west of our campus. And this is where we run all of the enterprises associated with farming. So it gives students an opportunity in third year and fourth year to come out. They'll have practicals, they'll have an opportunity to get involved with some of the research that's ongoing through their research projects and their placements. But we will be able to demonstrate to them all of the latest happenings, both from a production side, but also from a research side. And it gives us an opportunity to get to, to know our students a little bit better because we tend to work in smaller groups. We tend to work on very specific tasks while we're demonstrating different aspects of the various different agricultural production systems. So it's a great opportunity in third year for us to, to get to know our students and to have a I suppose a more uh, involved discussion with them about the, the specifics that we would have gone through in the classroom and then we can relate to what's actually happening on the farm as well so it's a great facility that we have we're very lucky to have it it's quite unique 
amongst all of the programs that are being offered uh, and it supports all of our programs here but UCD is quite unique in that way to have all of these resources available to it and to have all the amount of research that we have in UCD supporting and underpinning the, the Ag Science degree program. Absolutely, we're very privileged really. And I suppose the other thing in my mind that makes this unique, that even though UCD is an enormous campus, a huge number of students, there's a unique sort of sense of community, I think, in the agriculture um, program between staff and students, support staff, administrative staff, technical staff, and among students themselves and their own, um, who you'll meet at, um, um, later. So I hope, ladies and gentlemen, we've given you a flavour of all of the, the diversity, so one CAO code, the DN250, but 11 possibilities in there. Um, so I, and back to Valerie now, thank you. Thanks very much, Anne. And thank you to Kevin, to Cheng Wan and to Helen. I know there's a lot of programmes to cover there and there's a lot of detail to get through, but I think you did a, a super job and I suppose summarising all the opportunities that are available here at UCD. Um, uh, and I think, I suppose, for everybody watching, I, I would hope that when you hear the range of programmes that you'll see that depending on your area of interest and what your interest is in, there's a programme that suits you. You will have, now we're going to move on to one of the really exciting aspects of our programme, which is professional work experience. In third year of all of the programmes here at UCD, students are required to complete um, a professional work experience placement. So to learn a little bit more about this, we're going to speak to my colleague, Dr. Sinead Flannery. and I am the School PWE Coordinator for the School of Agriculture and Food Science here in UCD. This evening I am going to share with you some information and insights into our Professional Work Experience Programme, which is also known as PWE. Here in the School of Agriculture and Food Science, we have had a Professional Work Experience Programme in place for over 60 years. We recognise the important role of Professional Work Experience in the education and training of our undergraduate students with professional work experience being consistently rated as the highlight of all degree programmes here in the school. Students gain work experience in a variety of environments across the agriculture, food, nutrition and environmental sectors, both in Ireland and abroad. PWE means different things to different people, depending on the degree programme in which the student is enrolled. For instance, some degree programmes must fulfil practical experience on farms, which in this case is the case for animal science and animal and crop production degree students. While other programmes such as food and agribusiness management embark on corporate placement opportunities. PWE also affords students the opportunity to consider different roles and challenge thinking within the agri-food sector. It is a fantastic opportunity for students to network, develop career strategies and build their contacts while also gaining invaluable experience within industry. In fact, many of our students secure employment as a result of their professional work experience prior to graduation. We are fortunate within the school as our degree programmes have been in existence for many decades with many of our graduates being leaders within the sector. Consequently, they are familiar with our professional work experience programme and the quality of our students and so are more than willing to host student placements recognising the importance of the PWE component to the student studies within UCD. So I guess in essence, how does it work? Well, all students embark on their professional work experience journey in the third year of their degree programme. And the duration of professional work experience programmes varies depending on the degree programme in which you are enrolled. Currently, we have 11 different degree programmes within the School of Agriculture and Food Science who are enrolled on the Professional Work Experience programme and the placement weeks range from 60 to 40 weeks, depending on the programme. In addition to this, each degree programme has an additional um, individual Professional Work Experience programme coordinator who prepares students for their Professional Work Experience programme, ensuring they are adequately prepared to get the most out of their PWE programme. The students have weekly meetings with their PWE coordinators as well as individual meetings to support them in planning their PWE programme. For example, students studying animal and crop production will be encouraged to get experience in tillage if this is something they are not familiar with or comfortable with, while a food and agribusiness management student who has a particular interest in accountancy, consultancy or tax for instance 
might be encouraged to seek a placement with a professional services firm such as Grand Thornton, KPMG, IFAC, etc. While other students who are interested in roles as an agricultural inspector might be encouraged to seek a placement with the Department of Agriculture, Food and the Marine or Chagas if they are interested in advisory and agricultural extension opportunities. So there is a broad range of opportunities available to students for their professional work experience programme. From farm placements to agribusiness to food processing, distribution and marketing to financial services to media and so on. A wide array of different opportunities. The majority of our students complete their professional work experience programme here in Ireland. However, there is the opportunity to travel abroad for PWE. Students are strongly encouraged by their PWE programme coordinators to travel abroad for their PWE programme, as it is a once in a lifetime opportunity to experience a different culture, a different way of living, and to experience the agri-food sector within another country. Each year, approximately 30% of our students will travel abroad for their professional work experience programme. The places students travel to for PWE abroad varies greatly depending on their degree programme. Some students stay closer to home, travelling to the UK and across Europe, while others go further afield to the USA, New Zealand, Australia, Japan, Iceland, Canada and so on. Typically, animal science and animal and crop production students complete farm and industry placements both in Ireland and around the world. Dairy business students generally travel to New Zealand for their PWE programme. Animal science equine students travel to Japan and Kentucky mainly. Forestry students travel to Iceland. Some horticulture students travel to Costa Rica, while food business with Chinese studies complete their placement in China. So the locations for PWE abroad are wide and varied. The final aspect of the PWE programme I would like to share with you are PWE scholarships and awards available to our students. These scholarships and awards are highly regarded by our employers and are a fantastic opportunity for our students. The Agricultural Science Association and Irish Farmers Journal sponsor professional work experience travel bursaries to encourage students to expand their knowledge of the global agri-food sector by gaining practical experience while travelling overseas. This joint initiative supports professional development opportunities for our students to ensure Ireland's position as a global agri-food leader is maintained and to strengthen the future of our agri-food industry. In addition to these travel bursaries, we have six monetary PWE Excellence Awards which are sponsored by industry partners. The Agricultural Trust sponsors one award, Grant Thornton sponsors two awards, KEPAC sponsors two awards and the Agricultural Consultants Association sponsors one award. These awards are highly sought after by our students and are highly regarded by our employers as they recognise students who excelled in their professional work experience programme. The School of Agriculture and Food Science also recognise outstanding students with a Certificate of Excellence for Professional Work Experience and Carberry Group sponsor an annual award to recognise a student in the Human Nutrition Programme who excelled on their Professional Work Experience Programme. And as I said, these are fantastic opportunities for our students. So in summary then, the Professional Work Experience Programme is a real strength of our degree programmes within the School of Agriculture and Food Science giving students a competitive advantage when they begin applying for jobs within the agri-food sector during the fourth and final year of their degree programme. As I mentioned previously, many of our students secure employment as a result of their professional work experience prior to graduation, offering an invaluable opportunity to students. I wish you the very best in your upcoming exams and look forward to meeting some of you at least in September. So thank you. Um, any student that you talk to, maybe that's completed their PWE, they will tell you that it was one of the, you know, the best experiences of the programme. That and the opportunity to study abroad. Um, students here on the Agricultural Science degree programmes can travel overseas and complete what is known as a semester abroad during the first trimester of third year. So we have a number, we have a number of uni university partners across the US, Australia and New Zealand. And this year, for the first time, we have partners in Europe. 
and students can travel and spend a semester studying um, at any of these universities. And this year we're going to see the highest number of students ever travel abroad. So it's a really popular option and it's just another opportunity for students to travel overseas during their experiences. The dairy business programme I might just highlight briefly is a little bit different that doesn't have the study abroad opportunity within it. As a school as well, we are really committed to encouraging students to travel and experience the agri-food sector at a global scale. We acknowledge the value that this gives to people, to students' educations. And each year the School of Agriculture and Food Science sponsors a number of scholarships for students to support them with the cost of travel abroad. So, in addition to this event here this evening, we do have an enormous amount of other digital resources available. So we might now just have a quick look at some of these before we move on. And if I could just remind people to submit your questions in the comment box below and we'd be happy to come back to you. There are lots of additional information resources available online to help you find out about our programmes. You can view our school undergraduate prospectus at www.ucd.ie forward slash ag food, which provides detailed information on the school, what to expect, professional work experience, the study abroad program, as well as detailed module information and student and alumni testimonials for each program. By visiting ucd.ie forward slash agfood, you'll find lots of great digital resources about our programs. View relevant playlists on youtube.com forward slash UCD Ag Food. Find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram at UCD AgFood. Register to the University's Prospective Student Portal at myucd.ie to receive updates about the latest events taking place at UCD. You can also live chat with our students and staff via the Unibody platform. So you can see there, lots of information at your disposal. And I suppose if I could highlight one resource in particular, I could recommend that you would visit the UCD Open Day On Demand platform, where there's four separate information events relevant to the agricultural science programs for, that we hosted just earlier this year. We would also encourage you to follow our social media channels at UCD Ag Food for regular updates and news. Now we might move on. So we're going to move on to the next, the, the final panel discussions of the evening. We're now going to be joined by Shauna Yeager, who is a Stage 3 Food and Agribusiness Management student, and Simon Lanigan, who is a Stage 3 Animal Science student. And I think it's going to be great now to hear the student perspective. We will then be followed by Mark Humsby, where we're going to talk about careers, and we're going to have a brief chat with Emma from the Admissions Office as well. So Simon, Shauna, you're very welcome. Thank you for joining me. Can you hear Hi. me? Yeah, yeah, we can do. 
Thanks very much. Um, we might start with you, Simon. So, Simon, you're um, a stage three animal science student. So I yeah. normally start um, this and I would say maybe just to people who are watching, if we look back at or if you look back at when you were completing your CAO form, um, maybe where, what were you thinking and how did you end up studying agricultural science? Yes, so hello everyone, my name is Simon Lanigan and I am a third year agricultural science student majoring in animal science. I always knew I wanted to be involved within the agricultural industry, so it was no doubt really that the world-renowned School of Agriculture in, of, in UCD was the way to go for me. Uh, when filling out my CAO, to be honest, I didn't know what I wanted to do or what preference, so I chose the non-preference or the omnibus route. And then when I went into first year, I then got a taster of all the modules and then I proceeded to choose animal science. Uh, first year allows for a taster, you could say, into different specialities, into the different modules offered and taught at the school. But for me, it has always been about animals, not crops, not business, just everything to do with animals. So it didn't take long for me to decide that animal science was the way to go for me. And through study modules such as animal reproduction, animal breeding, genetics and nutrition, I felt that I would get a well-rounded education that will certainly allow me to exceed into the future of the agricultural industry. Sounds great. And um, I suppose, is there any highlights of the programme for you so far? So you, you mentioned some of your modules. I mean, maybe what's your favourite module or one of your favourite modules and maybe some of the highlights for you of the programme and how the programme is structured? Well, these modules allow for a great understanding, but we all know it's putting the theory into practical that will allow you to succeed in a career. And third year for me allowed me to do that. So currently I am undertaking my professional work experience as part of my degree. And this evening I am tuning in from the Netherlands where I am undertaking an animal breeding internship in a bull breeding center with 500 dairy cows on site also. But before coming here, I spent four weeks slamming 1,200 yods back in Kilkenny, where I'm from. So as much theory as you get on campus, the degree certainly allows for the practicalities as well. And certainly the professional work experience program to me has been a highlight of my degree. Great, and it's lovely to, to you know, I suppose to, to hear from a student who's on their work experience. So we see we see it happening in real time. Shauna, we might say hello to you as well. Um, as I mentioned, Shauna is a food and agribusiness student in stage three as well. So maybe the same kind of question to you, Shauna, like how, what made you decide to study agricultural science? And then perhaps when you did study agricultural science, why food and agribusiness? What was your sort of thinking there? Thanks, Valerie. So yeah, I'm Shauna. I'm in um, third year food and agribusiness management. Um, I'm also on my PWE at the minute, um, similar to Simon. Um, so when I think back to secondary school, uh, fifth or sixth year, thinking about what I wanted to do after I left school, um, although agricultural science is something that I had an interest in, it was never something I thought I would pursue a college degree in or a career in. Um, I, it's, agricultural science was actually then introduced as a subject to my school and that's what really sparked my interest. Um, and then following that, reading the prospectus for UCD, reading all the specifics, uh, the module breakdowns for each of the uh, um, 11 available courses in underneath uh, the DNT50 code. Um, I, re I, re I really gained a, a big insight into how uh, wide a variety there is available to you, um, both from um, a degree perspective and then uh, also from a career perspective. Um, so similar to Simon, I chose the omnibus route. Um, although going into the degree, I did that food and agribusiness management would be my chosen uh, major. Um, I decided to go through the omnibus route in case I thought that um, the animal science or the animal and crop production would spark more of an interest for me. But um, as I originally thought, um, the food and agribusiness management course was um, it was the most interesting to me. I love, as was mentioned earlier, I love the kind of mix between the science subjects and the business, the economics, the finance. 
Um, so that's uh, what I pursued and that's where I am now. Great. Um, and maybe for people who are watching, maybe we just, if we, you, you spoke about first year and we spoke earlier about first year and I suppose in terms of modules, it's a very common first year when you study a lot of the kind of the core sciences and then as you, as you move through the years that you, that, that, that changes and you, you specialise. But just in terms of a social side or a personal side, when you arrive in first year, um, you know, how is that um, and how is that experience? And maybe just some thoughts of that for somebody who's considering joining us next year. Simon, maybe we might ask you first. Yes, yeah, so I came from a country school with very few people in my year. So definitely the thoughts of coming to Dublin were quite daunting at first, but my peer mentor group really made um, that transition very easy for me. So in first year on your first day, you get split into groups um, of maybe 10 to 20 people. And from there, it really allows you to make friends and to introduce you to the School of Agriculture. And from there, then you can, with those friends, you can do anything really. But yeah, definitely the peer mentor group for me um, was the beginning of a very good social life, you could say, and it allowed the transition to be very smooth from a country school to the big city. And you're a peer mentor now yourself, I think, so you, you, you welcome first year students now and I suppose show them around when they arrive. So I think it's a great, it's a great, it's a great feature. And Shauna, maybe yourself, um, how did you find arriving in first year? And is there any comment that you'd make? Maybe Anne mentioned earlier, but on the School of Agriculture, and it is renowned to have a great sense of community. AgSoc is quite a well-known society. There's, you know, there's a good social side to it. Um, how, how did you find all that? Similar to Simon as well at the start, um, I was quite nervous. Quite, it's quite daunting. Um, UCD is a very big um, university, um, but uh, as you mentioned, Valerie, uh, the School of Food and Ag is really, really like it's like a community. Um, something that's really unique about the physical building in the in on campus is that we have a common room and a tea shop, which is run by the Ag Sock, um, like you mentioned. And um, this is a great area for you to get to know your peer mentor group in the very beginning. Um, which is really is an excellent way to kind of break down um, groups of people and make it a lot easier to talk to people. You can talk to two or three people in your men peer mentor group, then one person might know a different person in a different peer mentor group, and it grows and grows from there. And that's really facilitated by those, um, by the common room and by the tea shop. You not only get to know people in your own year, in different years, you know, in first and second year, you get to talk to people who are heading out on placement, people who've been on placement, you get to have an understanding of kind of what's ahead of you. And I, I suppose as well, it's, it's, it's sort of gaining contact as well for all these people that are gonna end up in the industry that you're gonna end up into after a graduation. So it's, it's something that's really unique and it's a really great aspect. Yeah, and I think we'll touch on that later. Certainly, the, the people that you meet here and once you work in the industry, you'll tend to meet them along the way for many years Definitely. to come. And maybe just, you know, uh, you are the incoming auditor for the for AgSoc. So, I mean, that's a fantastic achievement and a fantastic role. So maybe a, t a tiny comment on that. Yeah, no, I'm really excited. Um, AgSoc is a really, really big part of any of everyone's experience um, in uh the School of Food and Ag, and it's a, it's a really exciting role to have. Um, we raise um, a lot of money every year for two chosen charities. We have a committee of people that um, help in every aspect, from the tea shop, from organizing events, sponsorship, um, a representative from each year group. Um, and we organize lots of different events catering to everyone's interests that join the Ag Sock. And um, we have everything from industry talks and Q&As that we host, there's um, debating, there is social events also outside of um, uh, the university. There is um, five-a-side games on the pitches. So there's just something for everyone to do. And it's something that everyone loves getting involved with. Great. Well, best of luck with that next year. Um, and Simon, I might um, finish up with one question for you. And I know we spoke there about AXA, but there's lots of other there's lots of other activities outside the classroom that people get involved in. And I, I think you both mentioned that you're probably not particularly um, active in sport, but there is lots of sport and there's lots of sporting opportunities. UCD GAA is really active. Um, and, and you know there's equine and there's there's the horticulture society as well and then simon you have been really involved in the great agri-food debate it's been i suppose a really really big um 
event across the industry. So maybe just to tell us a little bit about that and how that experience was, and then we might move on and come back to a few questions at the end. Yes, so I am the Agricultural Science Society debating officer, but apart from that, I've also been on the Great Agri Food Debate team that represented UCD, and we get to go to competition, uh, a competition every year, and we debate topics uh, in relation to the agricultural industry uh, that are trending at the moment. Um, but I would certainly urge people to get involved and make an impact on their degree and get the best that they can possibly get out of it. But certainly if you are into sport, you should do sport. But there are other things also, such as debating and public speaking and a wide range of activities that one could possibly do. Great. Okay. Thanks very much, Shauna. Thanks very much, Simon. Um, if you just stay, um, kind of stay with us, we might come back to a few questions at the end because I know there's lots of questions coming in. Um, we're going to move on now. I'm going to talk to Emma Donnelly. So Emma is with the Admissions Office and then we're going to have a chat with Mark Comiskey from the Careers Office around Careers. So welcome, Emma. Welcome, um, welcome Emma and Mark. You're very welcome. So Emma um, is joining us from the admissions office. So I suppose um, you've heard lots this evening about, you know, the agricultural science programs and what they involve and how you'll study and all of that. But I suppose there's an application process to get here. Um, so Emma, we might just ask, like, how do people apply? What's the, how do people how do people arrive in UCD studying agricultural science? Of course. So for all Irish and EU applicants, you're applying through the central applications office. That's the CAO. You just pop onto their website and submit the application. If you haven't applied yet, you can apply up until the 1st of May. And if after listening to everything for the last while, you've suddenly gone, I need to get a new course in, or you want to reorder your preferences, you can use the change of mind facility right up until the 1st of July to get that down. And you've heard Anne say a couple of times, the code is DN250. You can then choose one of the 11 options or if, like the guys have said, you've no idea and you really want to come in and give it a try, you can select no preference and take the pressure off and choose when you come right in. So if someone's presenting the Irish Leaving Cert, you'll need uh, an ordinary grade six or a higher grade seven in Irish, English, maths and a lab science subject. So for the lab science subject, we just need one and it can be any of the lab science subjects of biology, chemistry, physics combined physics and chemistry or ag science. So it just has to be one of those. We don't specify what it has to be. For any applicants coming from the UK or the EU, you won't need Irish, but you will need those other subjects. And just to note that anyone who is international and applying from outside of uh, the EU, you guys will apply direct to UCD and UCD Global will be able to help you with that. Great, thanks very much. And maybe just one or two small things that I might ask, because I know we've had a few questions on it this year. Um, just, I suppose, given the year that's in it, there's a number of people deferred last year, their start date. Is there any advice that we can offer to people this evening or anything we need to just say to people? Yeah, so anybody who deferred last year will have heard either from myself or one of my colleagues directly. It's a reapplication through the CAO. You just pop down your deferred course and you guys don't have to worry about the points or anything like that because you got in last year. So we'll offer you and it goes out in round A, which is early uh, July. And um, you mentioned points, so maybe we'll just touch on points for a minute. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the main question every year yeah. is, is what will the points be? And unfortunately, we don't know because they're actually set by you guys watching and the grades that you get this year. What I will say is last year with the introduction of the predicted grades, there was a bit of a blip in the, the points that was needed. So look back over the last couple of years to get an idea of kind of the standard that's needed. So, for example, in 2019, you needed the low 400s, around 420 to get a place. Last year, that went up a little bit to 453. But I would always say to people, don't worry about the points. Put down the course you're really interested in and just go for it. One thing to note as well with the all the different options within DN 250, the points don't change depending on the course that you choose. It's just for DN 250. You get the points, you come on in and you're guaranteed whichever degree area you want to come into. 
And maybe one thing I might just mention, or you can confirm, but I suppose just with the, with the, the slight restructuring of the programme, there's four programmes now under DN 250 that were under different codes last year. So there's the dairy business, the forestry, the horticulture, and the agri-environmental sciences programme. And they now come under DN 250, and the points for those programmes are relevant to the DN 250 now. I think, you know, a few people maybe over the year were wondering what way they work. So it is that they will come under the DN 250 points now. And we think that'll op offer lots more opportunity for people, but mm -hmm. just to, to clarify that. Um, in addition then, I suppose, to the, the, the CAO entry, alternative entry routes and alternative pathways to join us here. Yeah, it, this is amazing. I counted them for the first time today, actually, before I came on. And in addition to the Leaving Cert, there are eight other entry pathways that we can get you in to study Ag Science in UCD. So it's amazing. The first one I'd like to really draw attention to is the QQIFET route. So that's where you do a one year PLC course at level five in a course such as animal care, laboratory techniques or horticulture. And then you apply on that basis. What's really great is there's a specific amount of places just for applicants coming from the QQI course. And that's been increased this year. So there's even more places for people to apply for. It's a really good entry pathway because it really prepares students for coming into study. Generally, you get to study at where you live as well. So it can be a really good in reintroduction to kind of university life and preparing you. And you usually find that the people who come that way are really successful on the course when they come in. So anybody interested in that route, have a look at myucd.ie and link out. And one tip I will say is just make sure you check the codes of the course and the modules to make sure they're the ones that we accept. Because sometimes we might call it something and other people might call it something else. And then just really quickly to run through the other ones, um, for anyone under 23, there's the higher education access route here and the disability access route, which is DARE. We have a UCD access course specifically into Ag Science for anyone over 22. We have the mature entry route for anyone over 23. And this year we're introducing uh, the open learning certificate entry route, which will mean you can come in in September of 2021 you can take some ag science modules to build up your certificate and you can apply to enter the course the following year. And then lastly, but not least, we also have transfer entry routes. So if places come up in second and third year as, as it goes on, we'll open those up and you have, if you're in a level eight course somewhere else, you can apply for an external transfer. And if you're in a level six or a level seven, you can apply for what we call a progression transfer and come in and finish your degree with us. So lots of entry routes for people to think about. Absolutely. And it's really important, I think, to highlight there's certainly a lot of there's a lot of, um, I suppose, news lately about, you know, you know, supporting people through various access routes. And certainly here at UCD and at the School of Agriculture, we're supportive of that. Um, and we're certainly committed to offering all those routes. So thank you very much. We might have a few more questions at the end if you want to stay with us. Um, we'll move on to Mark now, because I suppose lots of people watching the big question is what can I do when I finish? So Mark um, works with the UCD Careers Network. So Mark, we might have a chat about career opportunities. And I suppose um, last night we had an event as well. And one of the, the things we highlighted when we started was that while UCD is where people come to learn and they learn, they come to, you know, learn, there is a huge um, focus within the university of preparing students through their years for careers um, so maybe just a few comments on that. And I suppose in practical terms, particularly in the school here, there is a number of activities. So in practical terms, what does that support mean for people? Maybe some examples of what we what happens. Well, thank you very much, Valerie. Uh, it's great to be back with you again this evening. Um, yes, you're absolutely right. It won't come as a surprise uh, to learn that we in the UCD Careers Network, you know, we're, we're really keen about working with students really from year one all the way through to their final year and indeed uh, to postgraduate study about thinking about their careers in a positive manner and adapting to their own changing needs and desires. And we do this through a variety of, of methods, work directly with, with some uh, courses. So for example, with PWE uh, years, I work with the groups that are going out to help them uh, prepare for their professional work experience uh, and make a contribution to that. I also work with uh, the Ag Careers section of AgSoc uh, to put together a number of sessions uh, to make uh, students aware of uh, the opportunities that are out there for them and then how to engage with those opportunities more effectively. 
Um, in fact, I think some of our Instagram lives are, are still up there for anybody who uh, wants to take a look at them. We'll give you a, a sense of the flavor of the type of online activity we've been doing in this pandemic year. But aside from that, the Careers Network runs a, an entire suite of uh, activities, everything from employer uh, events where employers are on campus. This year, that's worked very well virtually. In fact, for some of them, we had a higher uh, number of people tuning in online than we ever had walking into a, a room in, on Belfield. So there are big pluses uh, for using technology uh, in the future in a way that we haven't been using it before uh, because of our experience this year. Um, we also have, uh, obviously, at the Careers Network, you can chat to a careers consultant any day of the week. In fact, any day of the week, any week of the year, we don't shut down out of term time. Uh, we're accessible. And we run a number of other interim things. So, for example, we run a, a program called Prepare for Your Future Career, which is actually a five credit module that uh, students can take as part of their program if they want to, uh, which makes them think more progressively about what they're doing and how they're going through it. And we run a program called, uh, um, excuse me, we run another program called Skills for Working Life, where we get employers, including some of the major agricultural or other agri-food, rather than not just agricultural, but agri-food agri organizations, such as Kerrig and Glambia, to contribute to the program where they are uh, essentially providing the same kind of training that they provide to the people that they hire. So they'd be talking about, you know, team working in the modern workplace, effective communication skills, how to work with people from different cultures, which in this sector, it was so great to, to hear you talking about the international dimension of the programs earlier. And indeed uh, with our, our student currently in the Netherlands, I think that's absolutely perfect because what we hear from employers all the time is, you know, Irish agri-food, agri is an export oriented business, particularly in the area of something like dairy, where they're constantly uh, aiming at uh, 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 export markets. It's the most important thing as far as they're concerned. And they are looking for people who not just have a sort of an outward looking mindset or an export oriented mindset, but they've got people who've actually done it. They've got people who've been abroad, they've lived off island, if you'll excuse the expression. Um, uh, and, and they're uh, being able to adapt to a new culture and uh, work with that effectively. And they, that's really something, I mean, that really means the one thing I would like to say about, about this particular degree, and I'm biased, I've been working with the, uh, with the, the School of uh, Ag and Food Science now for a number of years, um, but they're really a, it's a very versatile uh, degree, no matter what discipline you go down into. And if you look at the types of employers that target us, you know, they're the ones you'd expect, Glambia, Arrivo, ABP International, um, Don Meeks, Kerry, Keypack. You know, you'd expect that, Alltech. This is the area you're in. But you're also targeted by Accenture, by uh, PwC, by Grant Thornton. So you're looking at people by Deutsche Bank, who, who are looking for students. And what they say, what they like is the sheer rounded nature of the student. It's not just the expertise in their particular ac academic discipline. I mean, that's nice, that's great, that's good. But they're also saying, these guys know how to manage themselves. They know how to work with in groups. They know how to work with different people. They understand that's where PWE really comes into its own. The fact that they've had a year working, as you mentioned earlier, quite a lot of people who go on PWE with, a, with an organization, you know, use that as a, as a launch pad into their career. And that works really well. But even for those who, who decide after their PWE experience, yeah, that was good. That's not exactly where I want to go now. I, I want to change that slightly. The experience of the PWE is really, really powerful. Yeah, I, I agree, Mark. And I think one of, one of the things that I suppose really highlight or really kind of I notice every year is the demand for graduates. So as you say, the versatile nature of the degree and the employers and the, the large and the small companies, and you know, the SMEs and all this, the, the organizations, they're all looking to speak to graduates. And I know at one stage, this year there was you know so many people interested like we nearly we had to do, we did kind of weekly informations and we nearly had to put a calendar of events together to, to to manage all the demand so the graduates from the school are really really in demand um, and as you say in agriculture but across a, a range of sectors um, and I think maybe just I'd like to mention um, two really big events I think in the, specific to the UCD School of Agriculture Food Science that really helps graduates we have a very strong relationship with the ASA which is the Agricultural Science Association and that's the professional association um, so when graduates at our school would become members here and all the members of that association are professionals within the industry and they would all have an agricultural science degree so it's a 
huge networking association. But they have a really strong relationship with the school and every year they organise mock interviews um, and they recruit maybe 15 or 20 people working with the industry come in and spend a day and they interview all our final year students as if it was a real job. Um, and I suppose that's a huge, I think it's a huge plus for the students and a huge benefit and it really supports them. I think, and a lot of them would say to me, like, that's the first time I've done a really, real interview. So that's a really practical, I think, um, experience. And it does, I, and it's great for the employers to see the calibre of our students. And they often would come back and say, you know, the, the standard of students is huge as well. And then Careers Day. I don't know, Mark, do you want to comment on the UCD Careers Day, which is organised by AGSOC? I think it's a fairly yeah, I mean, unique event in UCD every year. I think it is. A, 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 I can be correct on that, but I think Ag Careers have been organising this since 1987. Um, and it's uh, it's really a uh, part of the fabric of the year for final year students. Um, and uh, it's a real chance to rub up against some of the largest organisations in the agri-food sector and indeed beyond uh, in, in Ireland, but also some of the smaller ones. I mean, that is the reality. The reality is that not everybody wants to work for a large corporate organisation, and that's fair enough. You've also got the fact that people will want to work for smaller organizations uh, and they're very well represented at the uh, Ag Careers Careers Day. Uh, I think it's a, a wonderful event. I, get, I work with Ag Careers around preparing students to take advantage of it and how to leverage uh, Careers Days uh, effectively, how to talk to employers um, and uh, looking forward to the next one in, in 2022. Absolutely. And maybe, Mark, one final thing that I might ask you, and we might maybe move on then and chat to everybody. But um, just in terms of the, the alumni and the network of people, I suppose the UCD itself has a really large alumni, but the UCD School of Agriculture would have a really big network of graduates. And while the sector is large, I, I often think the, the sector is small as well, because um, pretty much most people that you meet working, um, a huge percentage have come from UCD, and there is a huge um, network there. So how important is that? Well, I, I think that's critical. I think it's critical in two ways. Uh, the, fir the first is that uh, we all work in villages. Uh, so once you start working in a sector, you suddenly realise, oh my God, I know everybody in this sector. Uh, we all work in village bubbles. And the other is that because of UCD's footprint, I mean, the School of uh, Ag and Food is the oldest one in, in Ireland. It's the only one in the university. And it has a very heavy footprint in this area. And it also has a, a very strong alumni connection. Alumni from UCD who have got an ag degree really want to help uh, students from from this uh, from, from 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 really want to help current students. So reaching out to someone who has graduated two or three years ago, four or five years ago, uh, through LinkedIn uh, can be a really powerful way of a student learning more about that particular area and perhaps. Um, tapping into the hidden job market and, and finding opportunities that aren't uh, uh, advertised elsewhere. Great, so we might ask um, Simon and Shauna to join us again for a few minutes and maybe perhaps if we have Anne. Um, we'll probably run way over time, so we're not going to have much time maybe for questions, maybe just one or two really quick questions. And something I'd be interested, um, following on from careers, to ask Shauna um, or Simon, What's your sense now as you head into final year? So I know you haven't experienced all the careers events, but what's your sense? Are you optimistic about the jobs out there? Do you feel there's lots of opportunities? Yes, yeah, so on completion of my professional work experience, I really feel that it has given me a well-rounded education um, along with the theory parts of the course that will allow not only me, but my peers as well to progress into the future and hopefully um, go into a, a quite a thriving agricultural industry and uh, hopefully get a job. But um, yeah, I don't know what Shauna has to say on that, but I definitely. know I'm very optimistic anyway. Yeah, no, I'd definitely be in agreement. Um, the Careers Day is definitely um, a big highlight. It's a really great opportunity to to network and to listen to what um, companies are looking for or what you might be interested in particularly. Um, and then also, you know, I, I've realized also similar to Simon while on placement, how specific modules that I have completed in first, second year and the first semester of third year, how are really applic applicable they are to um, industry work and how um, well prepared I felt walking into placement. Um, although I'm still learning a lot and I'm learning every day, I really felt prepared um, because of the modules and because of 
um, the experience that I got in UC previous to it. Great. Well, that's nice and po a nice positive note to end on. And um, I think we probably just don't really have time for any more questions, even though I have enough questions here now. We could stay here till nine o'clock. Maybe, Anne, I might just ask you, um, you, you spoke to us early, maybe a closing comment for people considering agricultural science. Why, we, why, I why should... <laughs> I think the best the best ad is sitting there right in front of us. I think Simon and Sean have have done the job, and I'm so so proud of them actually. Um, but I think they, they represent the, the community of of ag science, and I think career, the most important thing when you're choosing any course is to choose something that you're interested in. I think that's the most important thing. And if it's animal science or environment or horticulture or dairy science, whatever it is, if that's your your thing then this is our place that, that you could be. Um, and I think the opportunity, the world's your oyster, ba basically, in my opinion. Yep, I would this. agree, Anne. And I, and I think it's something that we'd often say to people, you know, you don't need to know maybe what you want to be in four years time. If you have a passion and an interest in agricultural science, um, join us here and you'll figure the rest out through the next four years. So thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Anne, for that. Thank you, Simon. Thank you, Shauna, to Emma and to Mark for joining us here this evening. Um, and thank you very much for your time and your contribution. Um, I would just like to, sorry, and thanks everybody who's here for watching. If you have any more questions, and um, my colleagues are still here this evening, so you can drop them in through our social media channels at UCD Ag Food, and we'll be here and we are happy to reply. Obviously, after today, if you have any questions, please do reach out and contact us. There's a lot of information here tonight, so we probably couldn't cover everything that people would like to know. Um, we showed you earlier the, ra the range of digital resources that are available, so have a look at all of them. The UCD Summer School will take place from the 8th to the 11th June, and we'll be hosting an Agriculture, Food Science and Human Nutrition event on the 10th of June of that week. So again, we invite you to come along to join us there. We'll have lots more information again at that event. I hope you enjoyed the event. I hope that you got the information that you needed here this evening and that it's going to help you in making a really informed decision in the weeks ahead. I know they're big decisions to make. The best of luck to you all as you sit your exams over the coming weeks. We do hope that maybe in September we will welcome some of you here to the UCD School of Agriculture and Food Science. Thank you and good evening.